most of my training I did with an old French guy called Jacques Eridou who ran a um, restaurant called La Madrague, which was named after Bridget Bardot's house in Nice. He worked sort of one-on-one -on -one for the best part of four years. In the 28 years he was running, he won every award. You know, best new restaurant, best restaurant, best BYO restaurant in Melbourne, best French. Then when I started working in commercial kitchens, it just fitted, you know, I just really enjoyed it. I, I like the speed of it, I like the, um, the team, the level of teamwork you get within a team of chefs and I like, uh, like the fact that you're never really watching the clock to see what time knockoff is. It's fast paced, it's exciting. We opened the cooking school in 2009, just before MasterChef, because everyone was still talking about Gordon Ramsay. The cooking school's interesting, it's fun for us and it's something that we enjoy doing very much. We run all sorts of classes, you know, pasta from scratch, Italian sort of classes, seafood classes, barbecue, we're getting guest chefs to do artisan sausages, butchery, Thai food. We've got a Vietnamese Chinese chef instructor that comes in and does dim sum. It's really the next sort of evolution between being interested in food and buying recipe books and watching cooking shows. The next step is really going to cooking classes. It's very personal teaching people. You know, it's different to a restaurant where you're cooking and whatnot. You've, you connect with people a lot more. This is an oyster blade of beef that I've slow cooked for probably about six or eight hours and then I've pressed it so I've stacked them all up and pressed it to compress it and then I'm going to roast it off again to serve and it should be absolutely melt in your mouth no matter what you do what field your passion for it will rise above anything else like we're pretty passionate about our area here, you know. We think it's a pretty special place up here. I think it shows through. Like if you really love food and wine and you work in food and wine, you can tell the difference straight away. If you're really naturally hospitable and you just love being around people and you're always going to, to make an impact. Yesterday I started here at 9 and I finished at 1am, you know. But I had a great day, you know. I spent some time in the kitchen garden, planting, we got to cook stuff and then you know, our staff came in and they were happy and I was just around a lot of you know, a lot of positivity and at the end of the day I was tired, I was knackered but you just got this silly smile on your face. I'm fairly fortunate in, in the path that I've gone down that I get to do a great many different things. One day you're doing a celebrity, emceeing a celebrity cook-off, the next day you're doing demo for 200 at Healthy Ageing, the next day you're working in the restaurant, the next day you're going to Sydney to do a demo for something, you know, another day you're cooking something for a guy that's about to ask his girlfriend if she'll marry him. I get a chance to work with lots of really eager young people, train them and, and work on their fantastic pathways to their careers. Keep evolving, you know. Keep evolving, keep changing whatever you do, you know, you don't want to stay the same. And be, and be true to what you, your, your core essentials, be true to what you do, you know. I think people tend to look for things that glitter. All that glitters isn't always gold. The bright lights can be enticing, but I think to be really successful, you've got to look at what you do and find the great bits in that. And you know, a lot of people are really very fortunate and, and, and don't appreciate. Yeah, at times I think, yeah, no, I can't really do it anymore. But I, I think, you know, I think I'll be in this business. They'll be taking me out in a box or something. Actually, I'll be propped up. I'll be about 89. I'll be propped up against the stove. I think it was Eckhart Tolle that said it. The key to happiness in life isn't getting what you want, it's wanting what you get. I think quite often in this life you race around trying to, to achieve things and trying to conquer things or do whatever you do and sometimes I think you're, you're too busy trying to get what you want, you forget that what you've got was what you wanted and you've got to want that as well.